Okay, so this is a continuation of uh, the polymer fracture, understanding the, the more, more microscopic uh, me me uh, mechanism understanding for different types of uh, polymer fractures. And uh, this is an example of the actual continuation of the previous lecture where I, I dis discussed uh, the brittle mechanism of, of fracture, brittle fracture mechanism called the crazing versus ductile fracture mechanism called uh, shear band formation or shear deformation zone formation. And uh, one of the fundamental questions that people would have is what will be the, the molecular weight effect to have a better mechanical property before it fails, before it undergoes the fracture. And so this is an uh, example of the experiment done uh, earlier on by this the, the group of people and the reported in uh, 1959. And you can see this, this is uh, they essentially plot weight average molecular weight and the percent of elongation at break. And as you can see here, uh, this is a percent elongation. So this is a probably nine, eight, seven, six. So this is about point point oh six percent. So it's a now it's a very brittle. This polymer is point oh six percent, and this is a point one percent. This is a one point zero percent, right? So this is a one percent strain. This is a 0.1% strain, and as you can see, that the higher the molecular weight it is, uh, you you have a sample that is uh, breaking is much uh, later elongation. So, in in here, and the molecular weight is low, it will be probably something looks like that, and when molecular weight is high, it can it can go to a much longer. So this is a elongation at break, right? and this is a and they go, and this is an elongation at break. And so this material essentially start to kind of tends to saturate. And then what will be the typical value? And then this is a value around here. And then, then they kind of conclude that, well, this is a something in the, in the ranges about uh, 200,000 uh, uh, gram per mole for polystyrene. Okay. So this experiment was, uh, and then now you consider the fact that the entanglement molecular weight is about polystyrene is 13,000 gram per mole. And you can see that uh, you need a sufficiently large number of entanglements, something in the neighborhood about, uh, uh, this is a to the 15 right, gram per mole in the, in the neighborhood about the, the uh, Ten entanglements or higher. So later, this experiment was uh, further developed by this uh, Arnold Liang and uh, uh, Ed Kramer. Uh, he reported the paper in the 1986. And what he has done is essentially he has also used a polystyrene. And this time, this is a monodisperse. It's a monodisperse polymer, and he essentially. He has a, this plot has a two meanings. With an extensive story that uh, actually number average molecular weight is more important uh, to determine the, the criteria for how, what will be the, the strain required for the uh, breakdown or the fracture. And this is a, how many strain, what's the strain do you need for the, the essentially failure? And he can he find out, you can, you can stretch it up to about 10% strain, right? This is about about 1% strain, and you need essentially about two to three uh, entanglements, molecular weight, uh, for have a, a substantial uh, mechanical properties uh, to actually to measure this fract to to perform the fracture behavior. But eventually, what I want to highlight here is. A sufficiently large molecular weight, the property is essentially saturate. Right? So this is a uh, when the molecular weight is too low. Obviously, it, there is a the higher the molecular weight it is, there is an increase in the uh, essentially the strain uh, required for the fracture, 
and the magic number is also quite similar to is about 10 times entanglement molecular weight. Okay, so this is a polystyrene that undergoes the crazing as a mechanism. So even so, uh, based on this, based on this work, this is a uh, Kramer on the who study on the fracture mechanics uh, for for a while, and then the, he that's in the nineteen. 86, which is a more refined version. The same thing is, essentially, the number average molecular weight is more responsible for polydisper sample. Uh, that is going to be you know, uh, more important than over the weight average molecular weight for determining the the fracture uh, behavior of the polymer sample, and consistently is about. Molecular weight is has to be about ten times entanglement molecular weight, and the fracture property saturate. Okay, so this is uh, one of the guidance that is uh, pretty much the similar and from from the before work and the, this this uh, this uh, revised work and the importance of the 10 times ent entanglement molecular weight. Okay, continuing on to the cold drawing of the second one. This is the last section, and I want to uh, give you an idea about what about if I stretching the polymers in the very result, what is called a semi-crystalline polymer that has a crystalline domains. So this is a typical uh, ductile polymers, which is uh, you have a, uh, this is a the yield, uh, this is yield point where you are seeing this the strain at the yield point, and then this is a stress at yield stress, right? So, and then this is a more the, when you stretch it more. And they are showing this uh, schematic diagram where you are seeing this sperilite, and then this is an elongated. Sperulite. Eventually, the sperulite structures are, are gone. And the way that you can easily see that is uh, using the wide angle X ray scattering, looking at the diffraction patterns, and they can kind of correlate that with this. So, this is uh, uh, kind of the uh, one of the recap that I can do is uh, by doing the tensile strain, you are seeing this region where things are pretty much straight line, just like here. And that's an uh, elastic deformation. You can do the Hookean law and the modulus of elasticity, and that's what we call the Young's modulus. And then you're seeing this a little yield stress, and then depending on the material, they can go this way, or they can go flat, or they can go up. Eventually, uh, you are seeing the among this all the landscape point where this is a something that this point. This is a ultimate tensile stress. And so this is also one of the important criteria that when you prepare the sample, what is the highest value that you can see? For this sample, that's the ultimate tensile stress here. For this sample, is actually this is an ultimate tensile, tens ultimate ten tensile stress. And also this one is elongation percent break. Okay. So this is also the term. That's also the term that they use. This is a elongation at break. And the molecular picture is before you have a more like undeformed uh, crystallized but now undergoing this uh, tensile deformation when you stretch them out this uh, cr uh, crystals uh, chain pack is kind of start to rock. They're going to unravel. Eventually, they're going to align parallel to the to the uh, elongation direction. So, the loss of the spherulite structure is uh, evidence, and then they this this is more like a fibrillite structures uh, involved with the before the spherulite uh, involved with the slipping and the twinning means there are two different. Uh, crystal slipping direction, so that's so what uh, you can see that. So uh, the so from here yield point, and then the neck is start to growing like this, 
And this is what people call uh, cold drawing in the semi-crystalline polymers. And they try to explain this one for the how the, this is a where uh, some, in, you know, for the semi-crystalline case, it's uh, easier for people to, to know the, the, the rotation of the crystalline region uh, if you're doing the extension slow enough. So this is a slow extension. As you can imagine that when you do this extension really fast, so this is, let's say, this is the one that this is a slow. So if you do it really fast, and that actually you might you might not be able to just break it uh, without having the time for the crystal domain to to rotate and start to continue to uh, change the morphology of crystalline domain. So this is a fast deformation. This is a slow deformation. That's a stress, and this is elongation strain. For this is from more like semi-crystalline. 